and extra trains are being brought into service to cope with the rush. Today saw one of the worst traffic jams for five years when the mainstream of home-going traffic was diverted into a cul-de-sac at the end of Gladstone Road, Middleborough. A road sign which should have warned motorists not to proceed had apparently been removed. Police cars sent to control the chaos have been unable to reach the centre of the trouble. The motoring organisations say the hold-up is one of the worst on record. Now here are the soccer results. Manchester well, hey, you would have found it in the middle of the road. <laughs> if Al didn't know it, all the cars would have bumped into it. Timmy! <laughs> Notice. Why? What's up? Well, she doesn't want me to have another goldfish. She says the cat gets at it, but I thought if she was in a good mood, she might change her mind. Well, what happened to the goldfish in the bowl? He died. Think it got pneumonia. <laughs> it's a bit damp in there, you know. Hey, do you think I could talk my mum round into getting another one? Ah, oh, well, that depends which way you approach her. There's only one way through the hole into the kitchen. <laughs> Not that way, you stupid idiot. I mean, the way you go about it. When I was a lad, I had several different techniques for getting things out of me, Mum. Sometimes I used to use the, I promise to be a good boy, approach. And other times I'd use the, um, well, all the other kids have got one approach. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll get round my Mum as easy as that. I expect I'll have to use the, well, well, why can't I have it? It wouldn't hurt anybody, and, uh, and it'd be a lot of fun, and it wouldn't cost much. And if you don't want me to have any fun, well, that just shows how little you think about me, and that's the thanks I get for being a good boy all day. So, approach. <laughs> well, that seems to be a lot of trouble to go to, just for the sake of one goldfish. Oh, that's only the beginning, Bert. I'm going to build up a, a stock of tropical fish. I'm saving up for one of those heated fish tanks. They cost about five pounds. Mm. How much have you saved up to now? One and four and a <laughs> You know, but the trouble is, I don't seem to be able to make my pocket money last out. Oh, well, there's only one way you can get round that, and that's by having a weekly budget and sticking to it. I've tried it. It doesn't work. I always seem to have too much week left over when the money's gone. <laughs> yes, well, there's no point in worrying about that until you've persuaded your mother to let you have a fish. Now, if you take my expert advice, I suggest that you Jimmy? Our Jimmy in the Children's Acting Agency, Hilda, but why? Well, the Freemans are moving to London, and Mrs. Freeman's offered to let Jimmy take her son's place on the agency's books. It's a wonderful chance, George. It may never happen again. Yes, well, that's one consolation. <laughs> well, now, what is this sort of acting agency, Hilda? Well, they specialise in children's art commercials. Oh, just, you can't imagine our Jimmy singing a jingle. No, Hilda. Some things, are Some things are just too horrible to contemplate. Oh, but he, he's got a nice little voice. Nice little voice. I've heard better noises from a leaky balloon. <laughs> George, be reasonable. This is a wonderful chance for Jimmy. I mean, they'll give him elocution lessons and teach him to speak better, and that'll make a nice change. Change my foot. What about all those private elocution lessons he had last year. After three weeks, his teacher was going around saying, Oh, flippy neck. <laughs> mm, I hate to think what Jimmy's going to say about it all, dear. Oh, I think he'll be all right if we catch him in a good mood. I've got his favourite rock cakes for tea. 
Oh, poor little bloody little wonder what's hit him. He'll come in here all unsuspecting, like Julius Caesar before the assassination. Oh, well, uh, you're right, Bert. You can't beat a bit of buttering up. Uh, I expect I'll use the uh, good old man approach. That's the one. Well, good luck, Jim. Mm -hmm. I hope you get that fish. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Hello, Julius. <laughs> Now, Jimmy, now, you sit down and have your tea. I've got your favourite rock cakes and that nice strawberry jam you like so much. Oh, thanks, Mum. And just for that, I'll do the washing up for you after. Oh, don't bother, love. Oh, it's no bother, Mum. Oh, yes, it is. That's my oh, job. You? Yes, you go out and enjoy yourself. Oh, I don't want to enjoy myself, Mum. I'd rather stop at home with you. Hello? <laughs> What are you after? Uh, nothing. Could I have some bread and goldfish? <laughs> Jam. Oh, so that's it, is it? Oh, Jimmy, love, I know you want another goldfish, but wouldn't you rather have a puppy? A puppy? Hmm. Then it could go to the studios with you and keep you amused in between rehearsals. What rehearsals? Well, Jimmy, you see, you're going to an acting agency. And then you'll be able to advertise things on the television. What? No, not me, Mum. Not me on the telly. Everybody would see me. I'd be a laughing stock. No, you won't be anything of the sort. Oh, no, Mum. I don't want a puppy, Mum. And I, and I don't even want another goldfish. I promise I won't bring another goldfish into this house, Mum. Honest, I promise. Here, you can throw the dead one away. In the... Oh, Jimmy! Oh, oh, please, Mum. Oh, please don't make me do it, Mum, will you? Please, Mum. Please. Please say the word that'll make me happy. No. That's the word. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Jimmy, stop fussing. When you get used to the idea, you'll think nothing of it. I don't think anything of it now. I'm going to tell me Dad. Dad! Dad! Aye, aye, the Ides of March are upon us. <laughs> well, don't tell me, Jimmy. I know all about it. Oh, Dad, why is my Mum making me do it? What's the reason? She doesn't need a reason, lad. She's your mother. Now, Jimmy, love, listen to me. I don't want to listen oh. to you. Get off. Now then, now then, Jimmy, that'll do. Now, look, Jimmy, I've remained neutral, you know, so far. Huh? But if your mother wants you to be an actor, well, that's her business, and I don't mind keeping out of the argument. But if you go on like this, Jimmy, being rude to your mother, and that's when I join in. Very well put. I don't care what you say. I, I'm not going to any rotten old acting school. I, I'm not. I'm not. Jimmy, do you realise what'll happen if I remove my belt? Yes, your trousers will fall down. <laughs> right, you have asked for it, Sorry, Dad. It was only a joke, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh. Sorry, Bert. <laughs> well, that settles it. He's jolly well got to go to this acting agency, otherwise he'll think he can get away with murder. Yes, I suppose so, dear. But I think one of us ought to have a little chat with him when he's cooled down, you know. <laughs> he very nearly caught it just, out, just as well he went out of the room when he did. Just as well, my dear. I wasn't wearing a belt. <laughs> Too far this time, Bert. Making being, me be an actor against me will. Cutting off me own comforts like a goldfish. Well, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to Blackpool to stay with me Aunt Ethel. And I might not come back. So there. Oh, come off it, Jim. Oh, what have they done this to me for? Me own flesh and skin. After I've stood by them all these years and helped them to bring me up. <laughs> if I'd known I was going to have parents like this, I wouldn't have come in the first place. Now, you know you don't mean that. Yes, I do. I wish they'd have sent me back and kept the store. <laughs> Will you pass me a piece of soap? You know, I might... I might stop away for several years. <laughs> I'd better take two pieces of soap. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. This has gone far enough. Now, look. If you promise to stay at home, I'll tell you how to turn this situation to your own advantage. Now, do you want to hear my idea? No. But I'm going to, aren't I? Yes. Well, what is it, then? George, it's your responsibility. You've got to make him see he can't get away with this sort of behaviour. What he needs is a man's firm hand. Yes, well, don't look at me, dear. I'm only his father. <laughs> oh, all those tantrums of his. Really, you know, dear, that child needs a psychiatrist. Oh, stuff and nonsense. Little boys are very uncomplicated. 
A father should be able to read his son like a book. Yes, but it's a little difficult, dear, when some of the chapters are missing. <laughs> but, George, you've got to speak to him, and that's that. You've got to make him go to this acting agency, and no ifs and buts. And be first. Oh, talk of the devil. Well, are you going to discuss it reasonably now? Well, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones if you'll just say you're sorry. I'm sorry? I accept your apology, Mum. Oh, I give up. <laughs> Jimmy, sit down. Your dad wants to talk to you. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Why do people have children? Well, you see, Dad, it's the bees that flit from flower to flower, spreading the pollen, and the little mother bird lays a little egg. Well, spare me the sordid details. I'm not here to talk about the sex life of bees. I'm here to talk about this acting school that your mother wants you to join. Well, um, that's what I came down for, Dad. I've had a second opinion. Oh, have you? Well, Janice has no right to give you a load of stupid advice. You should get that from me. <laughs> it wasn't Janice. It's somebody that prefers to remain enormous. <laughs> oh, and what does this enormous friend suggest? Well, he reckons that if I scratch your back, you should scratch mine. You see, Dad, I want to buy this heated fish tank. Oh, so that's it, eh? Blackmail. Well, you're wasting your time. Oh, Dad, it, it won't cost much. I don't care what it costs. I'm surprised at you, Jimmy. You just don't realize the value of money. I know. I haven't got any. <laughs> I don't see why I can't buy a fish tank out of the money I'll be earning. That money is going straight into your post office safe. Oh, George, be reasonable. If Jimmy earns the money, I don't see why he shouldn't spend some of it. Hilda, dear, you said be firm. Well, I didn't mean that firm. All right, Jimmy, love, that's a bargain, eh? OK, Mum, and just to show my appreciation, I'll lay one of the fish after you. Oh. Yeah. How about Hilda's guppy? <laughs> Be firm, she says. Oh, dear. Uh, women. You can never tell what they're going to say next. Honestly, Mr. Clitheroe, do you think that we men will ever understand the weaker sex? We should do, Bert. We're all members of it. As for Jimmy, I tell you, Bert, that boy one of these days will drive me round the bend. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he'd be halfway to the station with his suitcase now if I hadn't had a talk with him. What do you mean? Jimmy, he was running away from home. And you stopped him? <laughs> yes, that's right. You're fired. Commercial. He's been going to that agency for two weeks now. Oh, be patient. Yesterday was only his fourth test. It wasn't his f fault he forgot his lines. Forgot his lines? How can anyone forget to say, I like it? <laughs> well, he had stage fright. Oh. He's got very nervous ever since it got round about him being an actor. Oh, in today's first day of school, I bet he doesn't half get teased. You know what devil's kids can be. Blinking, rotten Daisy Atom. She's the rottenest girl in the whole school. She, she's dead nasty, that's what she is. Why, well, love, what's she done? She kissed me. <laughs> oh, the girl must be a masochist. No, she's a Methodist. <laughs> Daisy Atom. Fancy a big man like you letting a girl kiss you. She tricked me into it. She said I could have her half of stick of licorice. And I started eating it at one end, and she started eating at the other, and, and we met in the middle. <laughs> oh, don't go on, please. It must have been a terrible experience for both of you. But I thought Daisy Hacker didn't like you ever since she put her pigtails in the inkwell. Well, she heard about me training to be an actor, and, and she's gone all daft on me, the soppy ape. Hmm. I don't know. Does she think you look good on telly? Yeah, she does. And she says I remind her of one of the Beatles. <laughs> good, because you're a commercial for insect powder. <laughs> Why don't you take a long walk in a swamp? <laughs> I don't mind about that Daisy Acker. 
But the other kids found out, and you should see the way they look at me because I'm going to be on the telly. Well, you are a bit of a celebrity, aren't you, love? Yes, they all know me now. And there's a big lad in the sixth form. He didn't used to like me. And every morning, he used to say, Hello, you little squirt, and pull me cap off and throw it in the mud. But this morning, he said, Hello, Jimmy. And then he pulled me cap off and threw it in the mud. <laughs> well, that's show business. <laughs> The teacher at the agency says I'm getting on very well with me acting. He says I'm atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you to love? You haven't had your tea. I'm going to rehearse my commercial. They might want to do another test. Oh, well, well, it certainly changed his attitude mm. since yesterday, didn't mm. it? It's amazing what a little limelight will do. <laughs> Mr. Quillerow. Oh, tell Bert. I'll be with him in the Jeffy dear, will you? All right, just... then. <laughs> You're just finishing a tea, Bert. Oh. Hello? Oh, yes. TV commercial for Frank's Fruit Jellies. The boy finishes eating his jelly and calls for his mother. <coughs> the boy <coughs> finishes eating his jelly. and then calls for his mother. Mummy? Jimmy's calling, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, well, tell him he'll have to wait. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, not you. She's on the phone. Oh, hello, Bert. Hello, Jimmy. I say your mum's on the phone. Oh, yeah. Mummy? 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 Oh, if he doesn't stop yelling, I'll murder him. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. No, Mr. Clitheroe. Please, could I have some more? Oh, thanks. Frank's fruit jellies are smashing. <laughs> Very good, me old china. I was forgetting you're a big actor now. Oh, I did have you with your eye, Bert. No kidding. No kidding. I didn't know you had it in you. That was Mr. Waring on the phone, Jimmy, from the agency. He said they're very pleased with those tests you did, and they say next week they're going to let you do a real commercial. Oh, heck. It looks as if you've got a child prodigy, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, Bert, stop it. No, I'm serious. He might turn out to be a real discovery. Do you think I'll get a contract offered from one of them big film seducers? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, that's enough of that. Bert, if you want to see George, you'd better come into the kitchen. Oh, right. Today, Jimmy Clitheroe, the sensational young acting discovery, was offered a contract by Fred Goldberg, the big film seducer. Mr. Goldberg told our reporter, this kid's acting is really atrocious. When interviewed afterwards, Jimmy stated, Daisy Hacker and I are just good friends. All right, I'll admit it. I was wrong sending him to that agency. But how was I going to know that he, he was going to carry on with this acting lark? Well, I wish somebody would carry him away, the conceited little blighter. Thank goodness he's only got one commercial to do. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, love. How are you? Mm. Mm. Well, I bet you're talking about that great actor, James Clitheroe. <laughs> How exciting it is to follow his meteoric rise from obscurity to oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, when dinner's ready, I shall be in the living room, dear. Well, he won't yeah. stay in there long. Oh. Crunchy munch, crunchy munch, crunchy plate for me. I've had some for my breakfast, now I'll have some for my tea. Oh. <laughs> Hilda, Rick has got to sing, dear. Why can't he do it outside the house? At least the neighbours will know I'm not beating him. Well, why do you think we're all in here? Oh, this is ridiculous. Crunchy munch, crunchy munch, crunchy munch. Jimmy, stop making that noise and open the door, do you hear me? Oh, stop the neighbours, I think you're murdering me. Yes, well, they won't be far wrong, will they? Jimmy, open the door! Crunchy, oh, Mum, you, you spoil me all. Listen to me, screaming Lord Such. <laughs> if you want to go on rehearsing, find yourself a soundproof room. Oh, why? Why all the fuss all of a sudden, Dad? I, I always sing in my bath. Oh, well, that explains why we're not used to it. <laughs> you just don't seem to get it in the right key. Crunchy munch, crunchy, oh. crunchy munch. I think it's B flat. Yes, so do I. <laughs> well, 
I just went to throw the potato peelings away and look what I found in the dustbin. Oh, my prized dailies. I only cut those this morning. Well, Dad, there wasn't room in the vase for them and, and, and me dandelions. <laughs> With love from Daisy. I have to take them to get rid of her. To get rid of who? Daisy Hacker. I don't think I've done the right thing in making a president of my fan club. Fan club? Well, she's threatened to resign if we don't get any members. Oh, well, now I've heard everything. No, not quite. The newspaper boys just brought 14 papers. And guess who ordered them? Well, I, I thought we'd better get publicity conscious. I mean, if I'm going to be on the telly, I shall want to read all the critics, see what they have to say about me. Oh, I'm sure they'll be entranced. Last night, James Cliverow gave a magnificent performance as a boy who was tortured by the secret fear that his mum would forget the fruit cups. <laughs> <laughs> they don't criticise commercial, just silly little fathead. You'll have to pay for those out of your own pocket money. Yes, and that's not the only way he's going to pay either. Now, I've had enough of this nonsense, Jimmy, and I'm going to stop it once and for all. Dad. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. This, James, is going to hurt you a great deal more than it is going Dad. to hurt me. Hello, darling. Well, where's the little fellow, eh? I suppose now that he's made his first and last television commercial, he's just about ready to jump in the river. Oh. Oh, no, he couldn't care less. Apparently, Daisy Hacker was very impressed when she heard him rehearsing his jingle. So he's decided to give up acting and concentrate on his singing. Oh, no. Dad, is it possible to make an electric guitar by wiring up your old banjo to the main? Oh, of course it isn't, and don't you ever try it. You'd better tell that to Jimmy. She loves he's just you, yeah, it. Yeah, oh, what? no. Yeah, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. I won't come in your smile. I won't be Yes, well, it's a bit too late to be sorry, you know, Jimmy. You might have had a very nasty accident. I did, Dad. Ah, I know you did, and that's just the trouble, Jimmy. Now, why don't you? Why didn't you come and ask me about this in the first place? Well, well, I thought you'd be angry. No, 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 Jimmy. If you just tell me all these wrong things that you've done, I'd be a lot happier. Oh well. In that case, Dad, I, I use your razor this morning to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> oh, yes, excellent, Jimmy. Yes, and uh, you remember that tin of paint that fell on your head off the wall and I said it was the cat next door. Yes. Well, it wasn't. It was me. <laughs> Good boy. Get it all off your chest. <laughs> Don't you mind? Well, it's as long as you tell me the truth, Jimmy. No, go on. Well, Dad, there was those new braces you couldn't find. I used them to launch my spaceship. <laughs> Excellent, Jimmy. Anything else? Well, there is just... Just one thing, mm -hmm. last bonfire night. Oh, yes. When we were burning the guy and you said it was the best dressed guy you'd ever seen. Yes, I did, didn't I? Yes. Well, that was your, one of your best suits. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. All right, my lad. You have been honest with me. Yes, Dad. Don't you? Yeah, I feel better, Dad. Good, good. You've been honest with me, so I will be honest with you. Oh. What have you done, Dad? Bend over. <laughs> 